To reiterate that, because it's important information, I haven't played this since I played it when it first came out. And back then, half the perks in the tree didn't do anything. Half of the ones that did do something, only half did something. As far as I'm aware, there are only two or three perks left now that don't do anything at all, and there's probably only that many that only half do something. So that's a massive upgrade. The game has been receiving numerous constant patches since last I played. There's so much going on with the game now. It is a much more refined polish experience, but it is a long time. I'm gonna suck massively, and what's gonna suck even more is I'm gonna be playing on realistic because I'm a masochist. The companions don't say, this is my generic backstory when you hire them anymore. That, ah, oh, what a fantastic, that, that improvement alone is worth a replay. All right then, select a culture. Now, as I was saying earlier, uh, in the kind of uh, the preamble of this stream, I'm sort of, I've got a... I'm not sure if this is even doable, or if it is doable, it's at all advisable. But I'm kind of liking the idea of, of uh, more, more sort of Celtic chieftain, uh, you know, kind of, kind of leading, leading the charge at the front with their troops all around them. On foot, of course. Uh, that being said, again, I did liken it to like a modern military force. Just deciding, yeah, we're not going to need uh, an air force, or yeah, we don't need a, na a navy. Assuming they had a coastline to defend, uh, you know, just intentionally cutting out a fairly important part of their, uh, their, 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 you know, their ability to engage in a specific theater of war. Not having cavalry is probably just going to make endgame terribly bad, terribly bad. Um, but maybe early on. Maybe I could just specialize in certain things and uh, we could just dismount the horse, be more willing to dismount the horse and just get stuck in uh, along with the, the rest of the men early on. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, of the of the, the the peeps that we have, we've got the Vlandians, 20% more upgrade XP to troops from battles. Well, that's fine, but you need the money to be able to keep them going. 20% um, less speed penalty for snow. That might actually be quite good. Um, I believe someone mentioned that there are seasons. So during winter, you're going to have 20% less penalty at all. And in uh, higher snowier areas, naturally, you're going to have a 20% less uh, speed penalty. So that actually might be quite nice for, for catching uh, looters and the likes. 20% um, construction speed bonus to town projects, wall repairs, and siege engines. I mean, that might be okay, but that that's planning for the far future. Aserai, uh, um, caravans are 30% cheaper to build and 10% less trade penalty. Might not be too bad if you're going to be uh, focused on being a trader. Good night, Holosol. Take care, mate. Have a good sleep. Um, we've got the... Uh, would you say they're Kuzites? Kuzites? I'm not sure how we'd uh, enunciate this. And I know that I am going to, out of force of habit alone, call them the Khajiits. It's going to happen. I, I'm so sorry. It's just, I... <sighs> Bloody Elder Scrolls. It's going to happen. I'm going to call them the Khajiit. And then when I do it the first time, I'm gonna st if I'm talking to, to, to anyone from this culture, I'm going to start talking like a Khajiit when I'm reading their lines. 10% uh, extra speed bonus for horsemen on campaign map. Okay, that's uh, not too bad. And finally, the Britann uh, sorry, the Batanians, but yeah, it may as well be Britannians. A forest to give 30% less speed penalty to parties. Now, that one actually is a decent one because that one, <clears throat> of all of these, I would say the Asurai, the Sturgeons, and the Batanians have the more useful from the beginning and useful throughout the entire game kind of perks, I think. 
there's always going to, you know, winter is cyclic and there are going to be parts of the, the world that are always co- covered in snow anyway. There are always going to be forests, whether it's in snow or, or in, in blissful burning summer, there will always be forests. And, you know, being able to make cheaper caravans and, and get less trade penalty is just always going to be good. Um, the speed bonus for horsemen on campaign map, that is actually kind of cool. Just started a trade focus campaign last week and made an Asarai. What's fun being a trader? Yeah. I, I think we're going to go the Batanians, though. The Batanians still remember the olden days when the woods stretched across northern Calradia and the empire and its cities had yet to violate their sanctity. The fierce warriors remain loyal to the traditional ways. They paint their faces when going to battle and even their noblemen prefer to fight on foot while using great axes and two-handed swords with deadly efficiency. This feels like it would lean into the idea that I had of having more of a uh, more of a on foot, more of an infantry focused uh, focused playthrough. I'm not going to swear off cavalry and certainly, we're going to want horses while while moving around on the campaign map anyway, just so that we can move a little bit faster um, and also carry a, a heavier load. Um, but I think I think battalions, yeah, I, I, I think this is where we're going to go. We're going to go with the battalions. Uh, right, okay. Um, let's find some... <laughs> They're here, though. Honestly, it's... <laughs> You gads, that hey, so 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 many of them just look ridiculous, especially when you're just rolling complete random. Um, I don't know if there's any particular benefit to being tall or short. I I I would assume I I guess that there is going to be, um, more benefit to being smaller, harder to hit, I guess. We are going to be changing the character, of course. You know, that's just the way it's going to go. But uh, let's see. Um, Soldiers! Okay. Infantry! Pull the line! Look at them run! <laughs> okay. Infantry! Shoulder to shoulder! Get back! Move! Engage the enemy! Warriors! We won! Hmm. <laughs> that smile, though, I'm not sure you want that. Let them advance. Taller, easier to catch arrows with your face. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You you provide Shatter a will. bigger target. At last, attack. Sounds Kill a little bit forward. highborn. Now. Halt. Yeah. Form a line. Stand your ground. Ah, we're one. Hmm. Circle facing outward. Footman, pull back. Okay, interesting. Uh, to ladders. <laughs> okay, I need to find out. Fall back. <laughs> I would, I would not be able to give my troops any kind of orders without literally weeing myself Footman. laughing. Oh, Victory. wow. I'm almost tempted, just purely based on how ridiculous that would be playing with that character. Footman, charge! Advance! Yeah! Ladders up! Okay, that really doesn't sound too good. Raise the ladders. Uh, probably about there. Kill them all. Okay, I think that's good enough. Face wise. <laughs> My goodness. What this is telling me is I was either in some sort of gladiatorial pit or... Oh, well, I'm not going to say what, what the other option is. I'm not sure. It's 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 switched safe. Uh, okay, well, uh, that's that's good enough for our character. And... <laughs> Uh, it's Alex mentioned this uh, previously uh, when when I've seen him go through character creator. They they've made this this uh, system which can kind of make parents that would create the look of of your your son and your siblings also carry that that kind of line. 
those genetics. And then that's it. You never, ever see them again. Possibly a JoJo character pose. Oh, ooh, yeah, that, that's that's quite right. I could, I could see a uh, JoJo character uh, wearing those shoulder pads. Hat shaped out of hair. Yeah. Okay, you were born into a family of or members of the Chieftain's uh, Hearth Guard, healers, tribespeople, smiths, foresters, or bards. Foresters, 10 skill levels and one focus point to scouting and tactics, or one tribute point to cunning. Now, if we go to the Chieftain's Hearth Guard... We'd get 10 skill levels, one in two-handed, and bow, one attribute point to vigor. Hmm. What kind of character are we setting up here? I'm I'm tempted more to go the combat route than the immediate trading route, but to keep my options open a little bit. I definitely feel that our primary character is going to need not just martial skills, but we're going to need leadership skills. It's going to be required. Bards. Ten skill level, folks. One po focus point in roguery and charm, and a trivia point in social. Well, roguery. Experience with the darker side of the human life. You can tell when a guard wants a bribe. You know how to intimidate someone and have a good sense of what you can, can and can't get away with. And charm. The ability to make a person like and trust you. You can make a good guess at people's motivations and the kinds of arguments to which they'll respond. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, scouting, knowledge of how to scan the wilderness for life. You can follow tracks, spot movement in the undergrowth, and spot an enemy across the valley from a flash of light on a spear point or a dust cloud. Tactics, your judgment of how troops will perform in combat. This allows you to make a good prediction of when an unorthodox tactic will work and when it won't. Smiths, uh, we get a point in smithing, two-handed. I'm not sure about that one. I mean, two-handed is literally just two-handed weapons. Uh, smithing, the knowledge of how to forge metal, which uh, handle uh, to, sorry, match handle to blade, turn poles, sew scales, and other skills useful in the assembly of weapons and armor. Tribes people, your family were middle-ranking members of the Batanian clan, of a Batanian clan, who tilled their own land. Your father fought with the Kern, the main body of his people's warriors, and joining in the screaming charges for which the Patanians were famous. To get one point in athletics and throwing, that's actually not too bad. Physical fitness, speed and balance, and mastery of throwing projectiles. Healers. Skill level in medicine and charm. We've already read charm. Knowledge of how to staunch bleeding, to set up broken bones, and to remove embedded weapons and clean wounds to prevent infection. And to apply pul uh, poultices to relieve pain and soothe inflammation. Really, the only stat you don't need at all on your main character is cunning. And the only skill you need under that stat is if you focus, uh, is if you focus in tactics. Right, okay. Cunning is the ability to predict what other people will do and to outwit their plans. So, yeah, I suppose that would be useful for AI, for purely AI-managed battles, where it's just simulating what would happen. And I, is that is that uh, a reasonable guess as to how that would pan out? That that is mostly used for like AI simulations of a battle rather than a battle that I'm actually taking a part in. 200 and Vigor. Uh, I mean, that's not too bad. Vigor represents the ability to move with speed and force. Bowery, it's not too bad. I'm actually kind of kind of surprised though about Forrest is not giving Bowery. Yeah, I I think hmm. the Foresters do sound kind of synergistic with the cultural background, but I feel the tribes people or the half guard are probably where it's at for me. They're both going to be useful for an infantry character. Smiths are actually really good, apparently. Oh, endurance, I suppose so, yeah. Endurance is the ability to perform taxing physical activity for a long time. Um, but I think it's it's either going to come down to tribes, people, or members of the Chieftain's Hearthguard. And 
I'm not looking to start off with all of the advantages. Let, let's let's we're gonna kind of role play this a little bit. Um, and we'll go with just tribes people. It's a nice middle of the road. These are good stats. I feel control uh, represents the ability to use strength without sacrificing precision. It's necessary for using ranged weapons. I mean that's not too bad. I'm not sure I'm actually going to go with throwing. I'm going to be honest, though. That one, but equally, I don't really think I'm going to be going with two-handed, so uh, it's kind of kind of either either way with that one. And apparently I don't need cunning. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll go with, with tribes people for this. So, tribes people. Choose your own childhood. As a child, you were noted for your leadership skills, your brawn, your attention to detail, your aptitude for numbers, the, your way with people, and your skill with horses. I don't really want to go for a cav-focused character. Uh, level 1 focus point to leadership and tactics, attribute point to cunning. Um, leadership. The ability to inspire. You can fill individuals with confidence and stir up enthusiasm and courage in larger groups. Okay. Uh, brawn, that's just, it's going to be two-handed and throwing. Uh, not really something I'm too uh, too worried about there. You were big, and other children looked to have you around in any scrap with children from a neighboring village. You pushed a plow and throw. You pushed a plow and throw uh, through an axe like an adult. Attention to detail. Give more control. You were quick on your feet and attentive to what was going on around you. Usually you could run away from trouble, though you could give a good account of yourself in a fight with other children, if cornered. Uh, one point in athletics and bow. I like getting the double point in athletics. I do like getting the other point in athletics there and getting a point in bow. Um, aptitude for numbers would be uh, trade. And engineering. I'm not too keen on these ones right now. These are, these are much later skills. And I would probably have someone else to handle that. Your way with people. Leadership isn't a bad one, though. Or charm, for that matter. I've never seen anyone do smith or healers. I'd love to see something new. Uh, I, I I wasn't feeling the the healer route though. Maybe maybe at some point we'll uh, check that out. Hey chat, does anyone know if they fixed the main uh, Bannerlord quest? Uh, I believe they did. Uh, says indisputable bear. Uh, Splatty was talking about it the other day. Oh cool. Detail does sound interesting. Skill with horses, uh, horse and medicine. I'm not too interested in that one i am wondering though if i recall correctly whenever it comes to uh any kind of clan business you can select someone in your party to handle those kinds of affairs so you can always select the character in your party with the best skills for it likewise with smithing or, or anything like that you would have a character in your party who's really good with that when it comes to interacting with nobles or, or anything along those lines do companions' skills, like in Charm, have any effect? Or is it all on you, as the leader of the clan, to be good with that? If I, if I don't put points in Charm, am I absolutely gimping us? All on the one talking. Okay. I'm going to say then... But as much as getting the attention to detail would be nice, I am going to go with way with people, at least so that we've got some focus points here. One in social. Social is the ability to understand people's motivations to sway them. We'll get charm and we'll get leadership. The two that I, I really want to see. I feel that this is going to be an important one. The number of companions you can have is tied to your leadership. Yeah, I, I think that's going to make sense. So we're going to go with our way with people. Like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also herded the sheep. This will give us uh, athletics and throwing again, so really doubling down on those. Also, Calvin, thank you so much for the subscription, mate. 14 months. I don't know why I'm awake at this hour, but I do know that I must pay the Napa tribute. <laughs> thank you very much for the, uh, the tribute. Your name shall be entered into the ledger as having paid your taxes. <laughs> Thanks, Millie. Uh, worked in the va village smithy. 
This will give us uh, smithing and two-handed. And it'll also give us vigor. Repaired projects. Uh, we would get engineering and smithing. Gathered herbs. Scouting. I imagine if you've got a companion with good scout in your party, like actually with your your your, your party, the best person scout is is used. Is that right? Because if so, I'm not going to worry too much about that on my main character. I might still want it anyway, but endurance is always nice. I did some more game. Yeah, one who was assigned it to the scout role. Yeah, so within the clan, I can assign someone to that role, and then that affects it. Yeah, so that that's good enough. So we could go with Bowery. Tactics, your judgment of how troops will perform in combat. This allows you to make good prediction. Now, again, is that more of an NPC skill for when I set up, uh, when, when perhaps I've got multiple parties, and some of them are being headed by uh, by my companions? Or does having this skill on my main character actually benefit me in any way? And sold produce at the market. I would get a little bit in all of the things. The first few points in tactics have a few leader only perks. Okay. Okay, that would give me trade, familiarity with the most common goods in the marketplace and their prices, as well as the ability to spot defective goods or to tell if you've been shortchanged in quant uh, quantity. Uh, we've all, we would also have a much higher charm, better social, maybe. But I'm kind of feeling, you know, maybe I'm going to end up with a, with a bloody javelin character. I don't know. Um... Tactics might have been the one you can't really delegate. Do you have the game set to automatic assign companion skills, or are you going to do that manually? I'm going to be doing that manually. I'll be changing the difficulty options as as necessary, but uh, and I'll also change the title of the stream once we're all set up. Uh, I don't really see anything really standing out here more than the the sheep. Maybe I should pick up a weapon skill. I don't know. Um, Either that or hunting small game. Just for that little point in tactics. Getting a point in bowery and doubling down on control wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing. Tactics has benefits for auto resolves if you decide not to lead your troops in, in battle. No, that, that's a good point. Yeah. So even though my companions aren't the ones leading the army, I would still be leading it if I auto resolved. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we will take this for the tactics and the uh, bowery. I feel that, that that kind of balances out a little bit. Choose your youth. As a youngster growing up in Caldradia, war was never too far away. You trained with the half guard for pole arm and horse riding. Mm, not really what I uh, what I fancy. Uh, stood guard in the garrisons for more bowery and engineering and a little bit of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Such a young man to have such a severe widow's peak. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. My lord. Road with the scouts. Bowery. A little bit of riding. Now, a little bit of riding is probably worth it for us. <laughs> he peaked early. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you could put it that way. A little bit of horse riding would be okay, because it will give us a better horse to, to use, uh, which will also have benefits on the campaign map, I imagine. Uh, trained with the infantry. Now that one I am quite interested in. One-handed and polearm. Joined the kern. One-handed and throwing. Or march with the camp followers. Roguery and uh, throwing. Hmm. Many battalions fight as Kern, versatile troops who could both harass the enemy line with their javelins or join in the final screaming charge once it weakened. That is too, that is too baby of a face to have that severe of a winter speak. What happened to you? My lord. Um, I think it's pretty much... Road with the scouts or join the Kern? Uh, all of Kuradi's kingdoms recognize the value of good light cavalry and are sure to recruit nomads and uh, 
borderers with the skills to fulfill those duties. You were a good enough rider that your neighbours pitched in to buy you a small pony and a sheaf of javelins so that you could fulfill their levy obligations. Hmm. Uh, interesting that this talks about a sheaf of javelins when it's bowyery that we get from that. I th I think it's I think it's the kern. I I think I definitely think it's the kern that we're going to be going with. So we're going to have five in control, but like two in vigor, two in endurance, two in cunning, two in intelligence. We're not the brightest spark. It must be said. We have a practical intelligence, okay? We have a practical mind. We solve problems straightforward. We see a problem, we fix the problem. If the problem is too complicated for us to fix, we find someone who can fix the problem. Thereby, we are solving the problem that the problem is too complicated to fix. Simple solutions. One leads to the next, leads to the next. A to B to C to D. Not A to D to Z. Our brain doesn't work in those eldritch ways. Before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was you defeated an enemy in battle, would give us uh, some vigor, some better one-handed and some two-handed. Not everyone who musters for the levy marches to war, and not everyone who goes on a campaign sees action. You did both, and you also took down an enemy warrior in direct one-to-one -one combat in the full view of your comrades. Uh, plus 20 renown on that one. You saved your village from a flood. Plus 10 renown, but plus one calculating. Uh, calculating. What's calculating? Hey, Belial, how you doing, mate? Yeesh, more avac? I suppose I could watch for a while. I mean, you know, I'm not forcing you, but, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, your, your eyes are, are welcome. Uh, in fact, the rest of you is welcome. You know, you know, I'll extend it. Yeah, sure. The whole of you is welcome, not just your eyes. Calculating is a personality change. It is the opposite to honorable. Ah. Oh, plus one valor. Right, okay, so that's a personality trait. I like it. I like it. That is still too baby of a face to have that. Wait, what on earth? Did someone just shave the rest of it? I think that must have been what happened. Um, you invested some money in land. I'll give a smithing and trade. Your parents didn't give you much money, but they did leave just enough for you to purchase a, pl uh, a plot of unused land at the edge of the village. You cleared away rocks and dug an irrigation ditch, raised a few seasons of crops, then sold it for a considerable profit. Basically, the start you start will be the farmer. If this would if this would were, were dungeon siege, we we we'd be up up on uh, on top, just tending tending our farm, and then the the, the was it the crawl? I think it was the crawl. Crawl just uh, come out of nowhere. Started to tell what the, what the dickens and smash a barrel. It's like what this a magic spell? I can cast fireball. What? From the humble life of a farmer, you go on then to rescue the entire kingdom. I have just convinced myself practically to place Dungeon Siege, the original, the OG Dungeon Siege at some point on stream, at some point. My lord, how did I manage to do that to myself? <sighs> I'm doing well, Bilal. How are you doing, mate? I'm sorry that it's quiet at the moment. It seems the game just hates music, at least in character creation. It is a classic. It is. I think it was at Dungeon Siege 3 that things started to move a little bit awry. They started to fall off the wagon a little bit. I still think Dungeon Siege 2 was good. Like, I genuinely think Dungeon Siege 2 was still a good uh, a good game. I don't think it was quite as amazing as Dungeon Siege 1, though. Um, you hunted a dangerous animal. Dragons. Wolves, bears, and a constant, me a constant menace to the flocks of northern Calradia, but nothing compared to dragons. While hyenas and leopards troubled the south, you went in a group of your fellow villagers and fired the missiles that brought down Smaug. Ten skill level in focus. Uh, so, so ten skill level, one focus point in polearm and crossbow, one attribute point in control, and plus five renown. Uh, you had a famous escapade in town. <laughs> well. Plus one to Val. 
Maybe it was a love affair, or maybe you cheated at dice, or maybe you just chose your words poorly when drinking with a dangerous crowd. Anyway, on one of your trips into the town, you got into a kind of trouble from which only a quick tongue and quick feet get you out alive. Well. Plus two endurance. I, I mean, you know, it could be meant many other things. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe it wasn't a quick tongue. Maybe it was a skilled tongue that got us out of that. Uh, you treated people well. Yours wasn't the kind of reputation that local legends are made of, but it was the kind that wins you respect amongst those around you. You were consistently fair and honest in your business dealings and helpful to those in trouble. In doing so, you got a sense of what made people tick. Um, plus one to mercy, generosity, and honor. Wow, that's a lot. You get a point in charm, we get some more social, and we get a point in steward. The ability to organize a group and manage logistics. This helps you to run an estate or administer a town and can increase the size of a party that you lead or in which you serve as a quartermaster. Does his face look a bit Bill Murray-esque to anyone else? It absolutely does. How can he have a witness speak like that but no beard yet? I don't know. It does, though. It, th th this is this is basically Bill Murray, it seems. Uh... Okay. Um, if uh, it's as if Bill Murray was drafted into the Braveheart film. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to unsee that now. You do realize you've now stuck that in my head. Oh, my Lord. Uh, oh, my goodness. I'm not going to be able to unsee that now. Well, it'll be easier once the beard is there and got a few more years on his face. But damn. <laughs> Savage. Um, I don't know. I We're going to be more of a... a combat focused character than than any kind of trading but on the plus side i don't think crossbows is worth it um plus one to valor uh calculating calculating valor might go with that one or just honestly you got one to mercy generosity and honor now out of curiosity for those of you who know does does this actually impact how I react to things? Because, you know, for example, if you've got a shy king in Crusader Kings 3, <sighs> well, you better just get them killed off as soon as you can so that you can pass the, 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 the title on to whatever children you have. Um, but it, it greatly impacts your ability to perform certain actions. But in this, does things like mercy, generosity, and honor simply affect the the way NPCs interact with you. Yeah, more social means more pals of battle. It is true. Oh, it unlocks dialogue options. Okay. Honor, generosity, mercy. Hmm. I wonder. If you act against the trait, though, you will lose it. Okay, that's that's uh, well, that's that's good. I don't think calculating. It's written as calculating, but I I get the impression that that means more. It's not so much that you can calculate the the best. You can chart the course to the most personal gain through a situation. It, it's 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 a specific tendency or rather you will chart the course to the most personal gain regardless what happens to other people through the conversation valor though valor i mean being valorous doesn't really have a moral impact valor is more <sighs> courage really and and whether you use it for good or you know good or ill 
valor is 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 your willingness to to get involved in things you don't shy away from something bad you know if your if your friend friend rolls up and is like i need you to help me i can't tell you why we can never talk about it again but there's going to be a lot of dead other people at the end of this it valor would be like you know, you you don't even wait the, you know you're already picking up your your weapon and you know kind of shrugging your your shield on and you give them a nod to to lead the way sort of thing whereas i feel that generosity and honor and mercy especially would be like ah i need to know that they're bad people first you are my friend and i do have your back i'll defend you against good people because I know in my heart that you're good. That's why we're friends. But I'm not just going to hurt someone if I don't know they don't deserve it, sort of thing. You know. That's 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 what I'm I'm coming kind of coming from. And I will be role playing this character to the best of my ability as we roll forward. So you know, this is important for me to set out and kind of have an idea of uh, of what kind of character we've got here. So it's either like straight up. Uh, we're better in combat, which I am kind of leaning towards, or we're better in social. I thought I'd missed a whole lot of the stream, but judging by the character creation, we're just starting. Yes, indeed we are. Hi, guys. Indeed we are. Toss a coin to your witch. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Can't go wrong with being dapper. I kind of feel, I feel this. The only part that I'm worried about is mercy. I don't feel that Calvary is the sort of place where mercy necessarily gets you very far. Not only that, I kind of feel that Kalradi is the sort of place where Mercy actually messes you up. Mercy is an interesting character trait. It really is. You can, you can still be generous and do what must be done when it must be done. But a compulsion to be merciful is a compulsion to let your enemy live because they threw down their weapon, even when you know they're gonna just they're gonna take them to jail, they're gonna bust out of jail, they're gonna shank someone you love, and then you're gonna lock them back in jail. It's the whole Batman thing. It's like, ah, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna stick you in jail. I know you're gonna get out, Joker, but I can't kill you. It goes against who I am. You know? Sometimes mercy gets other people killed. Mercy and Calradia. Hmm. What alternate reality is this? Indeed, that that's kind of uh, that's kind of where I'm at with that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I I think that being said, depending on the way the game now that me saying that is is the whole comic book idea of mercy and the the typical game implementation of mercy, and that is it is straight as a die, black and white. There is never any nuance in real life. You can be a generally merciful person, but still capable of of hard choices when it's clear that you need to do that, you know? Um, and yes, that is true, actually. Mercy is killing... Yeah, that, that's actually a good point. Maybe in Kalradi, the idea of mercy is you don't make your enemy suffer before you, you kill them. It's like, well, you know, you have to die because I can't trust you, but I don't need to make it painful. So, yeah. I, I kind of see... I see... You know what? Hmm... Okay, I'm 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 rejigging. I'm rejigging the way I'm going to be able to roleplay this character in my head right now. I'm 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 reassigning this, and somewhere back there, I'm I I can hear Ned Stark saying that if you pass down the sentence, you have to be the one to carry it out. Yeah, I I I kind of like that. Yeah, I think we're going to be. We're going to be going with this. You treated people well. Ah, glad to see I can step away for 10 minutes and Avik is still debating the same choice. And can't you? Sure, sure. Don't call me out like that. How rude. My lord. 
Like many families in Calrad, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of an army of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer. But you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders and you were all killed. Rip, game over, you made too many bad decisions in character creation. Start again. No, it was but a fever dream. Your parents were slain and your two younger siblings seized, but you and your brother survived because... Well, that's, that's exactly where we're going with, Tabcoat. That's why I've gone Britannian, because for better or worse, and I'm going to be honest, ultimately, tactically, for worse, it's, it's, why, it's why so many Welsh chieftains died so young, because they did lead at the front, and they would then just get sniped by an arrow or something. Um, so there was a constant movement of, 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 of leaders in 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 kind of Welsh history, um, whereas you know you you get uh, you get to your, your your Romans and your English knights and all of that, and the leaders are at the back on top of a horse, just kind of be bellowing orders at the other poor sods who have who are expected to march forward and die. We're going to go with more of a uh, with more of a. Uh, yeah, well, I, I guess, I guess, uh, the, the this this culture is more more based on Britannia. So yeah, we're we're going to be playing around with that, but at the same time, I obviously you know war is war is dangerous, and we're not going to be taking totally unnecessary risks. But uh, that's that's the way we're going to be trying to go with it. Uh, the, you subdued a raider, and you were able to grab a knife in the confusion of the attack. You stabbed a raider, blocking your way. Uh, One-handed and athletics, nice, and uh, one point of vigor. You drove them off with arrows. Bow and tactics, not too bad. You grabbed a bow and sent a few arrows at the raider's way. They took cover, giving you the opportunity to flee with your brother. You rode off on a fast horse. Uh, jumping on the two remaining horses in the inn's burning stable, you and your brother broke out of the encircling raiders and rode off. You tricked the raider. In the confusion of the attack, you shouted that someone had found treasure in the back room. You then made your way out of the undefended entrance with your brother. Cunning. I like it. You organized the travelers to break out. You encouraged the few travelers in the inn to break out in a coordinated fashion. Raiders killed or captured most, but you and your brother... <laughs> Basically, the conversation went like this. Hey, brother, okay, I'm fairly certain. You know I've got the gift of the silver tongue. I'm pretty certain I can rally these these poor saps and make them think they've got a chance. They're going to charge forward. We're going to look like we're charging forward with them. But we're going to be hanging back a little bit to the, the, the right. You notice where the guards are at the door? They're going to be favoring the left. The fight is going to be savage, but in the chaos, we're just going to be able to get out there. Don't look back. The screens will eventually fade from your nightmares. It's fine. This is what we would have if cunning was one of our options, but that is not what we're going to be picking, no. You don't need to be the fastest, you need to be faster than the others. Yeah, exactly. And if you're not faster than the others, then, you know, uh, a knife blade across their hamstring will probably fix that problem. If they happen to have gone with mercy, generosity, and honor, fall down and start mewling that your ankle has been turned, they'll probably, against their better judgment, come back to help you out. And then in the, in, as they start to lift you up, then slice the back of their leg and bolt. Again, this is the option that you would be allowed to take if you had selected a character backstory that gave you calculating instead of generous, merciful, and honorable. Hey, hey, hey. You may you may say that that was a very dark havoc thing to do, but you know what everyone else is saying? Whatever dark havoc told them, because he's the only one that survived. Yeah. You know, the, the <laughs> history is written by the winner, or at the very least, the survivor. <laughs> dark havoc is just a trove of writing ideas. Uh... Leading from the front isn't always a literal thing. No, no, it wasn't always a literal thing, but it, it, it 
quite quite often the whole leading from the front is you'd be down there with the men. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be on a hill way at the back on a horse. But uh I don't know who this dark avoc is, but this avoc guy barely survived. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, I think it's either going to be subdued uh, a raider or drove them off with arrows. Um, control will be at six at this point. We get another point in tactics and point in bow bowmanship. Archers are, are pretty, pretty powerful. They They genuinely are. And I could honestly have my pick then of archery or javelins, depending on the situation. Maybe I'd even take both, depending. You know, archery from when they're at a far, switch to my uh, sheaf of javelins when they're getting in close and, you know, I can uh, bury a javelin in their chest and then switch to my to my mace when, for the survivors who managed to get close enough to me to bonk on the head and take his prisoners. Hey, yo, Sticks. I think we are going to go... Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think... I think I, I definitely feel that this character... It's literally either arrows or it, it is... It is Subdued Raider. And I think it's going to be Subdued Raider. Yeah. You were able to grab a knife in the confusion and attack. You stabbed the Raider, blocking your way. You prepare to set off with your brother on a mission of vengeance and rescue. Here is your character. Click next if you are ready, or go back to make changes. I'm not going back. Do you know how long it took me to get here? Culture. Batania. Uh, forest gives a 30% less speed penalty to parties. Now, the issue with that is if I end up fighting in a forest, it's not exactly... Well, actually, for, for straight-up infantry, it's probably still good. It's not good for archers, and it's definitely not good for cav. Uh, tribes people, uh, sorry, uh, family with tribes people, early childhood. I had a way with people as an adolescent. I hunted small game. As a youth, I joined the Kern. As a young adult, I treated people w well. Not everyone liked me, but even those that didn't couldn't actually tell anyone why. They just didn't get on with me. And sometimes that's just the way it is. Not not every personality gels. But I didn't do anything specific to deserve their uh, their disdain. They couldn't say I was dishonorable. I was always fair, even for the people who were jerks and didn't deserve it. And we subdued a raider. And then we went. Uh, enter my name. Now, as I recall, you don't put a full name here, do you? Kinak. Uh, Ergion. Mengus. Luchain. Uh, Luch uh, uh, that, that would actually... Uh, what was that? L Luchan, I would have said. Lid. Yeah, only the first name. Mich. Well, I, you know what? We're going to keep it simple. It's going to be... Avak. You would choose the clan name later. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go, then. Avak it is. All right. Now, this is the part where chat is going to just yell at me for being stupid. And I am being stupid, and I know I'm being stupid, okay? But there are going to be a couple of things that I'm going to ask for, for advice on. Because I don't know how they affect the game, and I might change things. But for the by and large, it's going to be realistic the whole way through. Uh, now, the, the combat AI difficulty, I have no idea. I have no idea what combat AI difficulty is. But I do remember that back when we played this, when it first came out, now, I, as far as I'm aware, the AI has been greatly improved, but generally, I had no no difficulty with the... Uh, with... Um, with the, the AI. I'm not necessarily like, you know my ego isn't so desperate for sustenance that i need to set it to challenging but i do want to check with chat if i set it to veteran because i can always turn it up later if i find that yeah i'm just winning every battle i'm not even trying hard 
um, then we can always up upgrade it. But and I, as far as I'm aware, you can always change the settings as you go. But would veteran be a good place to start? The only thing I would say, uh, the issue is with play received damage. It takes you out of battles too easily mm, to a successful hit. Well, uh, you know, then be less quick to run into the middle of the fight. Stray javelins will get you. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I suppose. Well, again, that, that's the interesting thing about a fight. I, we're going to go with realistic. We're going to see how it goes. It may force me to play, uh, you know, further from the back than I initially intend to. And that's, you know, that's going to be a, that's going to be a learning experience and something for the character, you know, in terms of the RP sense. Right, disable births and deaths. Choose if heroes are not able to age and reproduce. This option cannot be changed later. Oh, no, they can grow old and they can reproduce. I, is that even a thing? So, you know, how how does how does that even work? So. The NPCs have children. Can it be multi generational? Will I age and and eventually eventually die? Can I have children with other people? You can have kids, and supposedly one day you'll play as the kids. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, we're going with that. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's amazing. Auto allocate clan member perks. No, do not do this. All right. I barely remember how to play this game. It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough, chat. I'm hopeful that you're going to be able to hold my hand and make it hurt less. <laughs>